Hi everyone, my name is James Frampton. I am the webmaster of ExtremoPars.com. I have been running the website for over five years now. Uh, if, you're, if you love Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, anything Mopar, come to that website. I've got a lot, a lot of cool looking cars on there. My members have a lot of their cars on there. So if you, if you get time, check it out. This tape tonight is on MIG welding and we're going to be welding steel so if you've ever wanted to try MIG welding you know nothing about it well that's fixing to change because I'm going to show you everything I know about MIG welding you can see the Dodge Charger here to, to the right of you. Uh, it's a car, a 1968 Dodge Charger. Uh, I used it to weld in all the floor pans. I've made some patch panels for the wheelhouse. Uh, I'm using it to put the quarters on, to weld the quarters on. So this MIG welder, you know, it's, it can get the job done for you if you're restoring a car. This, this is what you need here. This, this welder is a Campbell Housefield unit, and uh, I've had it for 10 years, and it still works great. So what I'm going to do before we get started, I'm going to show you what the dials and the selector switches, what those are for, and how to use these properly in order to get a good weld. So, we also will be talking about uh, shielding gas. I, I use argon gas, it's a mixture, 75% argon, 25% CO2. I'm also, also going to be talking about the wire size. Uh, and show you different parts of this welder and to help you try to try to help you get familiar with it so that way when you purchase you one uh, you, you you'll know at least where to start at where to begin at hopefully in the correct way these units usually come with a handheld mask but you'll really they're great for someone that's maybe observing your work or something like that. But I want to move up into, into one of these auto darkening helmets. And this one is solar powered, so the sun charges the batteries. I've had this one for 10 years. And the batteries are still great in it. So you just leave it out in the sun a little bit or a lot. It'll charge your batteries up, and when you make that arc, as soon as you make that arc, it darkens to protect your eyes, because you don't want to be looking at something without one of these helmets on when someone's welding. It'll, you, it will definitely hurt your eyes. It'll burn your eyes, so definitely want a helmet. And uh, this, this darkening, auto-darkening helmet, uh, I think I paid 30 30 40 dollars for it uh, it's a, but that's something it's a good investment it's something that you'll want to definitely get like I said these it's the same principle but it obviously it, it stays dark uh, and you can't do really any good welding holding this in one hand and trying to weld with the other so You'll, you'll want to definitely get you a, uh, one of these helmets here. And you can get one very reasonable, reasonably priced. So, I've got my notes here. I forget real easily <laughs> since I've gotten older. And so I've got my, I've got my notes here. And we're going to go over this, this whole unit from A to Z 
and I'm going to tell you exactly what, what each one is for and what they do and, and what you should look out for and what you should not, what you should not do. So stay with me. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, guys, we're back. All right. This is the inside of the MIG welding unit. Uh, what we have here is the wire spool and we also, below this spool here, we have a chart that the company suggests for you. They show you the the different sizes of wires uh, in this case here uh, 0 .030 0 .030 or 30 thousandths flux core wire 35 thousandths flux core wire uh, 24 solid MIG uh, that's for wire that has no flux in it uh, and this the 30 thousandths solid MIG wire which requires this argon gas here to shield your weld. A uh, flux core wire is the flux is already inside of the wire so as you're welding uh, the the flux inside of it inside of the wire uh, helps to protect the weld from contaminants I personally like using the gas. I seem to get a better weld using the gas, so always go with this argon gas here. All right, this the spool of wire here, and this is one pound of wire. You can get it up, I believe, to five pounds. You will feed it, this wire, through this tube here. And there's a roller in this section here, and the roller, they call it the drive roller here on this one. It, the roller that you use will depend on the size of wire. This particular wire here is 30 thousandths. So that roller will be a 30 thousandths roller. So it can stay within, it'll stay in the groove of that roller. And this screw here, you can adjust the tension on the wire. You can adjust the tension of the wire as it's being fed through this, through this uh, hose here, out into the torch, and then through the nozzle. And depending on whether you're going to use flux uh, wire or, or just a solid wire will determine the settings that you use inside of this box. So, and in fact it shows you here on this chart, a uh, welding polarity chart, you've got the positive and negative in fact, they have the, the wires here marked. Uh, this one, which is the torch, they're showing that if you use a solid, a solid core wire, you will put the torch, this here, the torch, to the red, to the positive. And Obviously, you would hook the uh, the the ground grounding clamp, which is this the clamp. Where is it at? Here we go. This grounding clamp, your ground would go to the negative, connected to this negative side here, 
and you would reverse that if you're using wire with flux in it. So keep that in mind. Okay, the wire in this case is 30 thousandths is fed through this tube it goes over this roller here and here you adjust the tension of it comes out through this into the gun goes through this this hose here up into the the torch and through the nozzle now I have a tool here that I use when I'm MIG welding the nozzle here the more you weld it's going to build up spatter in there so with this tool here this particular uh, uh, size right here this particular size here holds it down helps loosen the nozzle you take the nozzle off if there's any buildup in there just simply take it clean the clean all that that spatter out of there because you want to you want it to be pretty clean in there all right this is the the tip and this tip has to match the size of the wire so remember the roller and the tip has to match the same size same diameter of this wire. This is the 30 thousandths. So, on this particular little tool here, it's got a place that you can put the tip in, hold it, loosen it, and take it off here. Just simply screws in there. Now, there's a little ball here at the end of this wire from a little while ago when I was welding and this comes in very handy you just simply could cut that little that little ball off there and the tip will slide right off these are what they call consumables so the more you use them the more you use this unit the more you weld and you're gonna have to replace the tips and obviously the certain the different uh, the, the different sizes of wire you use will determine what size of tip you use and you can get them in a pack where there's either one size or, or a variety of sizes so okay I want to show you inside of this welding machine, the, the, the Campbell House Weld machine, and it has a chart in here, it shows you uh, your, your heat settings, depending on what metal thickness you're going to be mel uh, welding. Uh, here is the, the wire spool, which is simply fed through this tube here and they call that tube a guide tube this particular wire is a thirty thousandths wire uh, so depending on what size of wire you use there is a roller here and that roller will match the groove inside of that roller will match that the size of wire that you're using so this particular wire here is thirty thousandths so this roller is is for this size of wire here's your tension 
screw. This, this adjusts the tension on the wire. This particular uh, welding unit also has a chart in here, they call a welding polarity chart. And if you are using a solid core, solid uh, MIG wire, it suggests putting the, hooking the torch up to the red, the positive, and the grounding clamp, the grounding wire, to the negative side. If you were using a flux core wire, you would do the opposite of that. But since I have a, a solid wire here, I will hook my torch up to the red. And I will hook the ground to the negative, which is the grounding clamp. Also, when you're MIG welding, you want to you want to keep this grounding clamp as close to the work, whatever you're welding. You want to keep it as close as possible to it. And you also want to find a good clean metal. You don't want to just stick it on something rusty. You want to get a good ground there. So you want, and also you want to try to get this ground grounding clamp as close to the work as possible. All right, I'm going to show you the front side of the welding unit. It plugs into one 115 uh, volt or 120, just a ordinary household receptacle in your house or, or you're in your garage. Uh, we have three settings on on this particular welder. The wire speed is controlled by the top knob, knob up here, uh, 1 through 10, 10 meaning the fastest, 1 the slowest. The heat selector switches, we have 1 low, 2 high, and we have a low and a high, and that's your only two heat, heat uh, switches there on this unit here. Let me turn the unit on. All right, the wire speed. I'll show you what, how fast it comes out. Set on ten. Just going to simply pull the trigger on the torch, and as you can see, it comes out pretty fast. Cut this off. I'll set it on number one, the slowest. Big difference. When I welded my floor pans in my 1968 Charger, my Dodge Charger, I kept it somewhere around four and a half to five. And that worked for me. That seemed to be worked pretty good for me. That those that uh, speed. Um, the chart inside of this welder shows you, gives you a general idea depending on the size of wire and the thickness of the metal. What, you're, what you will be welding will determine what settings these switches will be tuned to. So obviously if you the thicker the metal 
you have a 11 gauge or a 10 gauge, you're going to have to really need a lot of heat for that. And so you would, on this particular unit, you would have both of those switches, one on high, the other one on two. This unit also lets you weld aluminum and I will have a video on on uh, welding aluminum in some of my uh, some of my other videos coming out but to, just to go back over it again the wire is fed through fed through this tube comes up, out through comes through the torch out through the nozzle and I, I put some MIG gel on there that's what that's on there and the tip as we talked about a little while ago the tip size will be determined by what size the wire is so this is thirty thousandths you're going to have a, a point zero three zero thirty thousandths tip for that wire and I believe that is about it for showing you I tried, I tried to show you all the all the things that would be necessary for you to to start welding to, to have your machine tuned to what you need to do when you start your project okay I hope I've helped you in some way uh, most of the time after I do a video I always remember something I should have put in it and uh, it will be the same with this video so I hope I covered everything as far as the setup to get you started in, in MIG welding uh, my next video I'm gonna cover uh, how to you know tacking uh, Tacking, tacking, which is a, it's just a short weld to hold things together until you put a good, good solid weld in, uh, on it. Um, butt, joint, uh, butt welding, two pieces of metal. You can a lot of times people do that with. Uh, uh, you can do it with quarter panels or, or or floor pans or whatever. And then there's lap uh, joints, lap welding. Uh, lap joint which is putting a metal over on top of the other uh, but I'll, I'll get more into that on my next on my next video that I have coming out the next video I'm going to show you uh, how to after, you know now that you're familiar with the well, you're familiar with the welder now we're going to start getting into the practice of of doing some welding so Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. And I'm going to try to at least put out three or four videos a month. Uh, it's sort of sometimes hard for me to do that, but uh, that's what my goal is. So until next time, my name is James Frampton. Have a nice day and thank you for watching.